sorry. So fellowship. Fellowship. I see the wrong kind of fellowship down there on North Avenue and in uh, uh, North Avenue and Ridgewood. Wrong kind of fellowship. Bunch of dope dealers and prostitutes and gang bangers and on and on. Trouble. That's the red zone. Stay out of the red zone. The red zone starts at Madison and goes down to Fairview. And we were carrying it down further to International now. You don't, you don't want a fellowship with darkness. 1 John 1 talks about light here in fellowship. You want to get as it might be said, you want to get in with the right crowd. You want to be with the crowd that's going to be going to heaven. And you want, how many of you want to go to heaven when you die? <clears throat> Almost all hands, there's only a, a, just a couple of hands that didn't raise, and I feel sorry for them. They, may be, they might be atheists, uh, they might not believe in God, they might not believe there is a heaven, but I'm here to tell you there is a heaven. And let me tell you this, everybody that's here, there's a, there's a desire in your heart to go to heaven and there's a desire placed in every person's heart to know God. There's a desire there. Now you can you can fight it, and 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 you can not yield to that desire, and you can love your sinful, wicked ways. Which we all, how many sinful, wicked people do we have here besides me? Everybody in the house, the little precious children. They don't know yet. They, they ain't getting it yet. But when, but when the little children understand that they're a sinner, then they need to be saved. It might be at four, five, six, seven, I don't know. Some people never reach the age of what I would call accountability. Some people might be 50 years old and do, do not have the, the sense and the mentality of knowing sin of a four-year-old. And consequently, by the way, let me tell you something. When a, a child or someone that never develops a mind good enough to recognize their sin is uh, saved, they're saved. The newborn baby, some people worry about these murderous abortionists and uh, the people that support abortion and have abortions. Uh, people And some Christians worry, oh, them poor babies are killed and go to hell. They don't go to hell, they go to heaven. See, the ones that think they might go to hell are the Catholics because the Catholics think you got to sprinkle water in your head when you're a baby to save you. That's what they teach. And so on and so forth. But fellowship. That which was from the beginning. Who, on, who was here from the beginning? I mean, before anything was, who was here? God. God. Isn't that amazing? We can't phantom God because... God has been eternally existent. God is the all, uh, he's, he's everything, and he, he wasn't created. He is, he is the I am. He is everlasting. He is the one as, as the forerunner of, of, of uh, the Lord Jesus Christ was, the, the priest Melchizedek. Remember him in the Old Testament? It said Melchizedek, he had no beginning and no end. That's God. That's a picture of God. Although Melchizedek, was a, he, was a, he was a priest. It wasn't Jesus. Some, I, I, I shouldn't say that so emphatically, but I don't believe Jesus is Melchizedek. I think the priest Melchizedek was a, was a, a shadow of Jesus to come. But Jesus is Jesus. And uh, it wasn't, he was a, a picture of what Jesus would be. That which was from the beginning, God from the beginning. Now remember this, I say this often, the most important verse in the, in the Bible on the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, is 1 John 5, chap, uh, chapter 5, verse 7. 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. Now, it says this, that there are... There are three that agree in heaven. This is the strongest verse on the Trinity in the Bible. 1 John 5, 7. The Father, 
the Word, which is Jesus Christ, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That's first. That's John chapter 1. And the Holy Ghost. So we have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. And they were all from the beginning because how many gods do we have in one God? And how many persons do we have in the Godhead of three people? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. So it says that which was from the beginning... God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes. They were personal. They saw Jesus in person. They saw Jesus, the Son, but he was God, of course. And he always do everything together. God the Father doesn't do anything, but he does it with the Son and with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost doesn't do anything unless we, we get out of whack and stuff. And see, some people... Worship the Holy Ghost. Worship the Holy Ghost. No, worship God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Some people just say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, yeah, Jesus. But worship God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Oh, the Heavenly Father, the Heavenly Father. Yes, the Heavenly Father. But the Heavenly Father and the Son, Jesus Christ, and the Blessed Holy Ghost, it's always a three in one. And, 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 and they always they have their position. Who, who in position is number one? God the Father. Number two position, Jesus Christ the Son. He always, what did it say about Jesus Christ the Son? He always did the will of the Father. So who's the boss man in heaven? God the Father. We pray. Our Father, which art in heaven. Amen? Amen. We want to get to the Father because he's the boss man. Is he God? Yes. Is Jesus Christ God? Yes. But Jesus Christ is the Son and the intermediate. He's the one we go through the Son, Jesus Christ, to the Father. The Heavenly Father. Ah, and the Blessed Holy Spirit. He's the one down here doing all the work right now. Amen? Amen. He's the one that I hope is filling me and using me to be a blessing to you so that you can either be saved or be encouraged or be strengthened, you see. So, we have seen with our eyes which we have looked upon in our hands of handle of the word of life. That's Jesus Christ. For the life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life. That's heaven. Eternal life. Of course, remember, remember, remember what I said in the beginning? That which was from the beginning. God always has been. But we get to... We get to enter the realm of God and the realm of, of godliness and the realm of eternally, not always have being, but once we are born again, we become part of the family of God and we become a child of God. How many of you here today, you're a child of God, you know you're saved and going there. Oh, that's a wonderful thing, isn't that wonderful? I want you to rejoice in that. Why don't you make more of it? Why do you keep fretting about this wicked old world and slapping you and kicking you all the time, huh? Get in the spirit, amen? Get in fellowship. Reason why you're not in fellowship with God is because you're too much in fellowship with the drunkards and the on and on and on. You name your poison, huh? You run around. You're a Christian and you run with ungodly people. That's your problem. If you're having fellowship with drunkards and prostitutes and whoremongers and crooks and every kind of wickedness, how are you going to have fellowship with a Heavenly Father and the Wonderful Son and the Blessed Holy Ghost if you're running with the world? Tell me, how are you going to do that? You can't do that. Can you? Why are you trying? to get awful quiet in here, isn't it? You know, I, I say this about many of you that are sitting here right now. I'll be talking to my wife and I'll say, you know, I, I, I wish so-and-so could be him, could be her. I says, I wish so-and-so would get out of that nasty environment they're in. They live with a bunch of drunks and sex perverts and everything. What, what are you going to be? If you're running with them kind of people, what else can you be but that? I mean, you don't, you don't catch good health. You catch bad health, don't you? When spiritual people get with worldly carnal people, the spiritual people get dragged down. The carnal people don't. You see, 
Oh, I'm just going to move into that house and going to get that whole house converted. No, they're going to drag you back and you're going to be a backslider. The Bible says, be ye separate, touch not the unclean thing. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says we ought to practice separation as a Christian. Eternal life, which was with the Father. That means Jesus Christ. He was eternal life. He's the Savior. And he was with the Father. Amen? How long was we with the Father? Forever and ever and ever and ever he was with the Father. Amen? Amen. <laughs> and was manifested on us. See, has anyone ever seen the Father? No, just the Son, because he could God and he come from heaven. But Jesus Christ came here to manifest God the Father to us. That's the only way we can have fellowship with the Father is through the Son. By the Holy Ghost. You see the triune God and how they're tied together and we must have it. Don't you follow these Jesus only people. I've got some uh, preachers that are I'm, I'm in charge of the police chaplains in Daytona Beach and we've got all kinds of Christian different things. Some of them are saved and Bible preachers and some of them are work salvationists and some of them are Jesus only. Jesus only says there ain't no Father or Holy Ghost. There's just Jesus. Jesus only. Well, that's silly. How can you read the Bible when Jesus is always talking about the Heavenly Father and the Father's always talking about the Son? How can you say there ain't no Heavenly Father? And how can you say there ain't no Holy Ghost when the, when the Bible talks about it? And again, what verse did we say is the principal verse in the Bible telling about the Trinity of God? 1 John 5, 7, which by the way, in all your new Bibles, your new international and your message Bible and your revised Bible and your Reader's Digest Bible and all of these Bibles that came out since Horton Westcott in the beginning, in the middle of the 1800s, they don't have 1 John 5, 7. They know they have not the most important verse in the Bible about the Trinity. You better get rid of them other Bibles you've got. I, I'm just working with someone uh, lately, a good Christian, using King James Bible, but said they have a new new international Bible to try to make some things clear. I said, Oh no, NIV ain't gonna make nothing clear. It's gonna it's gonna muddy the water. <laughs> you don't take. The King James Bible, in the English language, the King James Bible is the Word of God. I talked to a guy yesterday. He's a Christian. He's a good guy. He does a lot of kind of work I do too, and he's wanting to do things and this, that, and the other thing. He says, well, I've learned, a, I've learned that I can have agreement and have fellowship with, with some people and this, that, and the other thing. And I said, okay. And he says, you know, some of you Baptists, uh, you got to have a tie on and a white shirt every time you preach. Well, you know I don't believe that because I ain't got a white shirt and a tie on today. Some of my Baptist brothers do believe that. And I'm fundamental. In, you ain't going to get no more fundamental and independent unless you think a white shirt and a tie is part of the package. Now, I wear it a lot, and, and I, I, I like to wear it. One of our good men right here on, on the front. Got him on a nice shirt and tie and everything. I says, man, and you're looking good. And I, think if a, I think if a Christian has... Uh, availability to nice clothing. If a woman has the availability to a nice modest dress that would uh, that would not reveal uh, uh, her body parts, now I would suggest that she get that and she would try to have that kind of a, a dress that identifies her as a woman with dress and long hair. You say, you believe? I believe the Bible teaches it. I wouldn't tell it to you. I wouldn't preach anything the Bible doesn't teach. And look the best you can, fellas. Get a tie. I ain't got one. I'll give you one. I don't have a white shirt. I'll get you one. <laughs> I can't have short hair as a man. I got to have long. No, you don't. I'll get you a haircut. <laughs> Isn't it funny? We sure got a messed up age, don't we? We got women with short hair like a man, and we got men with long hair like a woman. <laughs> All this reverse rolls. Most women come in here, got trousers on. What if I was up here today and, and I'd have pranced out here on the stage? I call it a stage because it would have been if I pranced out like that. And I had on high heel shoes and nylons and a dress. We know you lost it. Oh, you say, oh, 
<laughs> Pastor Varga doesn't come out of the closet. <laughs> But the devil's got all you women wearing trousers. Don't believe the dirty devil. Believe it. Believe the Bible. It, it says the Bible says there's there's clothing that pertains to a woman, and there's clothing that pertains to a man. And you ought to be when you go to the bathroom uh, in the, in the Target or Walmart or wherever you go or in the restaurant or whatever. How do you identify which one door you're going to go in? Got a picture of a woman with a dress on or a man with trousers on, don't they? Except now they got in all this cross-gender and it depends upon how you feel today. If you feel like a girl today, you're a girl. If you feel like a boy tomorrow, you're... It's funny. All these boys now, these, uh, uh, these uh, uh, middle school boys, you know, all of a sudden, when gym, gym class is coming up, they feeling like a girl. You know why the, these uh, uh, middle school boys are feeling like girls? Because they're a lot, get this, this came down from Washington, from the President of the United States, Barack Hussein Obama. It came down from him. Executive order. One voter on or anything. That young men, if you feel you're a girl today, you have the right, and the schools are instructed, let them go into the girl's shower. Now there's a lot of them, a lot of the young adolescent boys that like to be in the girl's shower, don't you think? Is that what you would like to do when you was an adolescent, fellas? <laughs> yeah, some of them are shaking their head. Yeah. That's how crazy America is. I mean, that's... And they say, if you don't do what we tell you, we'll, we'll defund you from federal funding. Now, I'm glad that's going to be changed here pretty soon, come January 8th or whatever day the inauguration is. We're living in a crazy world, folks. We need to get back to God. We need to get back to God when men are men and women are women Amen. and they have their place and we have a Savior and we have a triune God and right is right and wrong is wrong and we're not making a change on it. Everything now, every, dope's okay, marijuana's okay, alcohol's okay. Here, I talked to someone yesterday, I forget where I talk to people every day about drugs and stuff and because on the telephone, someone, uh, oh, a donates to the, donated to the mission, bringing something in for the mission for you folks and others. Get some children's things in here lately too and uh, it's coming in. You, you folks have got kids in here today talk to me about that. Uh, get some things in for that too. We don't have that. We don't have a real big children's ministry. Some churches do. We used to have a gigantic children's ministry when I was in Milwaukee but we don't have that much here. But, but, but the thing is uh, we've got to get back to this old time religion. And we've got to get back to knowing the blessed Heavenly Father and the blessed Savior Jesus Christ and the blessed Holy Ghost and to have fellowship with Him. Because you see, let me ask you this, dear friend. How are you doing? Is your life all messed up and you feel like a termite and a yo-yo? You don't know if you're going up or down, huh? You know what's going on. Why is it? You don't have God in your life. You have no God. Either you're not saved or you're, or you're badly backslidden. You have no God. Ah, it says here. Ah, oh, here. Look at verse 3. We ain't getting far today. I'm going to be in 1 John 1 for days. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us John says, I want you to have fellowship with us as a Christian. You understand? See what that says? Look at it again. Verse 3. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that you may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father, capital F, that's God, amen, and with His Son, capital S, that's God, Jesus Christ. So we want to have fellowship. Where is God the Father right now? 
seated on the throne of God in heaven, on his mighty throne in heaven, all them angels around there saying, holy, 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 oh, glory to God, isn't that wonderful? God the Father's there. Who's seated at his right hand? Jesus Christ the Son. The Blessed Holy Spirit is doing the work down here right now. He lives within me. But you know, when the Blessed Holy Spirit lives within me, so does the Father and Son. They're always in complete harmony. I didn't get that for a while. I was thinking God was here and God was there. and No, no God's everywhere. And the three in one God is together everywhere all the time. Now it told us that in 1 John 5, 7, didn't it? That it was agreed in heaven between the three. God the Father, God the Son, God the... So God the Holy Spirit, He's in here. He's speaking to you. If you're not saved today, listen, there's some of you here that aren't saved. Some of you here that aren't saved. God the Holy Spirit speaking to you, saying you need to get saved. You need to get saved. You need to get saved. You can either reject it or deny it. I, I'm reading a book right now by my favorite writer and the, the preacher that meant more to me than any preacher, John R. Rice. He was an evangelist and a pastor, and he entered the sword of the Lord. He, uh, he, 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 he wrote again, the, uh, the damnable heresy of hyper-Calvinists, this is what's on the cover of the book, I'm reading the book right now, the damnable heresy of hyper-Calvinists that says people are predestined to go to hell. That's not taught in the Bible. And the, the hyper-Calvinists that they have this off-the-wall teaching, they always say, oh, you're, uh, you're predestined, it's settled, you're going to heaven if you're the elect. What about if you're 90% or 95% of the world that's not elected for heaven? They're elected for hell? I think not. Because God's not the one that it should perish, but that all should come to repentance. I don't buy that false doctrine for me. And, and with John Rice, I call it heresy. You know what, uh, you know what the hyper, you know what these fatalists call what I teach? Heresy. I'm on the right side. They're, on the right, they're teaching heresy. The Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You better be careful, you fatalist. You hyper, a lot of people. Uh, I'm not going to get into that now. It's a whole other subject. Let's get back to fellowship. <laughs> fellowship, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. Now, verse 4, and we're going to finish on this one. We're going to preach on all this. I might be in First John for a month or two. And these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. How are you doing? Why are you so grumbly? Why are you so critical? Why are you so aggravated? Why have ye no joy? Because ye have no fellowship with God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Ghost. You have no joy because you have no fellowship. I'm just telling you, that's what I just read you from the Bible. That's what I'm teaching today. If you got some sorry kind of life that you grumble about everybody and complain about everything and, and are down in the mouth and always depressed and everything and have no joy, that's because you don't know God. Listen to me. You say, but I'm saved. You might be saved... But if you have no fellowship, you don't have the proper relationship with God. Does that make sense to you? I mean, if God says here that fellowship with the Father and with the Son and with the Holy Ghost, that He wants you to have that so that you could that your joy might be full, full joy. I mean, hallelujah. Glory to God. He said, you're supposed to be a fundamental Baptist. You ain't supposed to raise your hands and say glory to God. The Bible says lift up holy hands. There you go. You stick in the mud, in the fundamental Baptist, and will never raise your hand. They might have got a little bit of Holy Ghost once in a while, and they might start going like this a little bit. Their head oh, they pull that thing down. <laughs> God help you, prune-faced, sour puss. 
never a smile. You ain't going to keep joy from this old-fashioned fundamental Baptist preacher. You say, all the, all the Pentecostals, they got the Holy Ghost and they got the joy. I got as much joy as any Pentecostal. Amen? Amen. Pentecostal ain't got no corner on joy. God's got the corner on joy. Amen? Amen. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. <laughs> Is they all preaching and getting old, you're going off the rails. No, nah, I'm just getting a little more Holy Ghost than I used to have. Getting a little more joy than I used to have. Why don't you get some old prune face? <laughs> I had one of our dear people come in yesterday, was down in the sticks. I'm not going to mention nothing about who it is or anything. Down in the mud, looking like this. That's and the per that person usually was like this. I said, where's your smile? I got my smile. <laughs> hey, be careful. I can read you. You can read me. Sometimes we can't hide stuff. Sometimes we can't hide our desperation and our defeat. Do you feel defeated today? Maybe you need to get saved. Do you feel defeated today? Maybe you need to come back from your sin. You know that you shouldn't be doing what you're doing. Some of you shacking up and you know you shouldn't be. You're a Christian. You're living an immoral life. Yeah. You know, we're quiet in here now. Listen, dear friend, you, you ain't going to have no joy shacking up, I guarantee you. You're not going to have any joy sipping on beer. You're not going to have any joy smoking your marijuana cigarettes. You're not going to have any joy lying and stealing and being lazy and on and on. You control your destiny. You control your joy. You say, oh, you ain't got, no, I'm not God, but I can surrender to God, and then God can give me joy. Just like he said here. Look at here. And these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. He wants to have fellowship with the blessed Heavenly Father, with Jesus Christ the Savior, with the blessed Holy Spirit, and with each other. Amen? Amen. See, because when I'm right with God and the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, and I'm right with them and you're right with them, we're right with each other. Had two of our people, they're both in here today. They was fussing with one another yesterday. I still be fussing with one another. <laughs> I told one of them coming in just today, just kind of guys, you ain't going to fuss with anybody. Oh, no, I won't. <laughs> I think they got the picture. You see, we have to do these things that would be uh, for fellowship. Fussing ain't fellowship. Fussing is ungodly. How many of you know you do that sometimes like I do? We fuss with one another and that ain't, that's not fellowship and that's not joy and God's not in it. God's not in it. The formula is here. Fellowship. God wants our joy to be full. We're just starting in First John. We're going to be in here a long time too. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for the word of God. You say, preacher, I'm saved. I, I know I'm saved. I might not have joy today because I'm not living like I should, but I know I'm saved. Slip your hand up. Let me see. Yeah, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Don't put your hands down. You say, preacher, I'm not saved, and I want you to pray for me because I don't want to go to hell. A number of you couldn't raise your hands. Just slip up and say, I need you to pray for me, pastor. I don't know I'm saved. I want you to pray for me. I don't want to go to hell. Please pray for me that I can understand how to go to heaven. Just slip your hand up. Let me see your hands. Raise them up high. Raise them up high. Lord, there's been a number of people here today that aren't saved that it will not acknowledge that they need salvation. They don't want prayer. I pray for them anyway. I'm going to pray for you anyway. Whether you acknowledge you want prayer or not, I pray the Holy Ghost to get a hold of you. I'm thankful for all these that are saved. The vast majority of people in here today are saved people. I'm glad for that. And we that are saved, let's keep our joy because if we lose our fellowship with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ, and with the Holy Ghost, we'll lose our joy. And the Lord says he's, told, he's written this first John to us that our joy might be full. Help us to have full joy as Christians. 
If you're a lost sinner today, repent. Call upon the Lord. I'm going to pray a prayer. Pray this prayer if you're a lost sinner and you need to be saved. Pray it in your heart as I pray it out loud. Dear Lord Jesus, and I believe you died for me and shed your precious blood on Calvary's cross and rose from the grave the third day. The best I know how with an honest heart, I turn from my sins to receive you as my Savior. Thank you for saving me right now. Did you pray that prayer and ask Jesus to come into your heart today? If you did, raise your hand right now. Say, I did it. Yes, yes. Yes, God bless you. God bless you. You had five hands raised. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All the angels in heaven rejoice over one sinner that repented. I hope some of you out in the, on the viewing audience, out in the internet, YouTube, and so forth, hope you'll trust Christ if you haven't. Get the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. That's what the Word of God says. Christian, you say, I'm a, I'm a Christian, I know I'm saved, but I haven't been living right. I don't have the joy I should have, and I've got discontentment, and I need to get some things right with God, and God's told me about it today. Would you slip your hand up? Let me see your hands. Right up high, right up high. Yes, 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 many Christians. Lord, thank you for these. Bless them, bless them, bless them. Give them the joy of the Lord. It will be our strength. Thank you for these that have been saved. Thank you for the food. Thank you for my dear wife, Barbara. Thank you for Doris, other helpers. Bless now as we fellowship in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.